solar panels, energy efficient light bulbs, vehicle fuel efficiency, fuel switching. There are many different ways an organisation can reduce its carbon footprint. However, given financial and technical constraints, an organisation cannot implement them all. So, how should an organisation choose which projects to implement? Evaluating the costs and benefits of different emissions abatement options is an important step in the carbon management cycle. To do this, we use project appraisal. Project appraisal is a structured process for assessing whether or not to proceed with a project. Say, for example, an organisation is considering undertaking either an LED lighting retrofit or a solar PV project. The project appraisal process would involve Firstly, shortlisting all carbon abatement project options that the organisation could feasibly implement. In this case, it's the LED lighting and solar PV projects. Secondly, the organisation needs to evaluate the costs and benefits of each option. Thirdly, it's essential to identify the risks associated with each project. These risks can include technology failure, time and cost overruns, political instability and change in government legislation. And finally, based on the financial and risk appraisal, the organisation can select the preferred option or options to develop a detailed project plan for. In the part four practical exercise, we'll focus on the second step, evaluating the costs and benefits of each option. This involves two key stages, calculating each project's net present value and then creating a marginal abatement cost curve. We'll explore net present value in this video and follow up in the next video with marginal abatement cost curves. Net present value, or MPV, is a mathematical formula for assessing the profitability of undertaking a given project. It's expressed in dollars, so if the MPV for a particular project is found to be positive, that is, greater than zero, then the benefits of the project outweigh its costs. If, on the other hand, the MPV is negative, then the project's costs are greater than its financial benefits, in which case the project should be avoided. Critically, MPV gives the value of a project in today's dollars, based on how much money the project is going to save or generate in the future, less the initial upfront cost of the project. Put simply, MPV takes into account the time value of money, now, time value of money might sound like an abstract concept, but I'll bet that you've used it many times in the past to inform decisions on your personal finances. Let's explore this concept further. Suppose, for instance, someone offers to give you $100 today, and someone else offers to give you $100 in a year's time. Assuming a bank interest rate of 2%, which option would you choose? Well, you should choose the first option because that $100 could be put in the bank to earn interest. At a 2% interest rate, your money would be worth $102 in one year's time. Therefore, the first option has greater benefit than the second option when taking into account the time value of money. On the flip side, if you borrowed $100 from the bank at a 2% interest rate, then the $100 would be only worth $98 to you in a year's time. To measure the time value of money in project appraisal, we use the metric of discount rate, which is a core variable of MPV. Net present value is calculated using this formula. Now, let's break it down into four important variables. Capital expenditure, or CAPEX, is the upfront cost to design and implement a project. In our LED example, this might include the cost of an energy audit, light bulbs, and the time taken to install them. Revenue is the financial benefit from the project over its lifetime. For LED lighting, this will be the dollars saved due to lower power use. For solar PV, revenue may also include the sale of any excess electricity to the grid. Operational expenditure, or OPEX, is the ongoing cost of the project over its lifetime. For a solar PV project, OPEX may include the annual cost of cleaning solar panels to ensure efficiency is maximised. And that brings us, finally, to discount rate. The discount rate reflects the time value of money when that money is borrowed. 
In our earlier example, this was 2%. Discount rate is given by the weighted average cost of capital, or WAC. This principle incorporates the cost of debt, for example, a loan from a bank, as well as the cost of equity, that is, the foregone returns that could have been achieved from alternative investments. If this all sounds quite complicated, do not worry. We will explore net present value analysis further in part four's practical activity. So, in summary, net present value is a way of determining the net worth of a project's future cash flows in today's dollars. Importantly, it gives us the capacity to make a decision as to which low emissions project or projects we wish to implement when we have limited capital and resources.